Okay, hey everybody, this is what we're doing the dash pot lifter, and I'm going to choose my origin to be the center of the pivot point of the part, because that's how I believe it functions. I've got my grid on, and I'm going to draw a circle in the front view um, that is 22 millimeters in di uh, diameter. So we're going to type in D and 22, and we should get a circle. And from that circle, we're going to derive some other locations. So um, if we were to look at the um, first link connection, it's a, it's a 10 millimeter diameter hole on the left hand side. That's 57 millimeters away. So we're going to draw a line um, from origin. And turn the grid snap off. I'm going to snap the endpoints and center so we can pick up the center. I'm going to draw a line with ortho on vertically and another one horizontally. And the vertical one we're going to offset that 57 millimeters I just mentioned. And uh, it appears to be on the same center line as this uh, circle. So we'll go ahead and draw a circle on the endpoint of that one and it's going to be a diameter of 10 millimeters. All right so we have those whole locations. Now we're going to start building from um, this side of the part. Okay so we're going to uh, model the clevis on the left first and we're going to have the back face of that clevis in the plane of what we're currently drawing. Create a circle that is uh, got a, a center point here with a radius um, of 11. Okay, so it's a uh, 22 millimeters overall. And then we will offset back from the center of our circle 35 millimeters, which will give us the uh, right side edge of the clevis. Okay, so we're going to take a line and we're going to go and we're going to set up our object snaps. We're going to select quadrant. We're going to do a, a line using quadrant and ortho to draw a line off the left. And then we'll repeat that with one coming from the top. We'll use a combination of extend and trim to build up the profile of the base of the clevis. Now there's a taper on this, so we're going to use a loft for this. So we need to create another cross section that's on the other side that reflects the other end of the part. So we have 38 millimeters away. We're going to make a cop. We're going to make a duplicate. We're actually going to switch to the top view. And we're going to select everything we have in the left side. We're not going to select the, uh, we're selecting the stuff on the left side. And we're going to do a uh, copy of those entities. And we're going to go from an endpoint here. And we're going to go, we're going to go with ortho on 38 millimeters. Okay, so we should have two profiles, but this profile has a different length, and so it's a 29th, 29 millimeter length. So we're going to do an offset 29 and an offset. I'm going to switch back to the front view.
and we're going to do an offset of 29 millimeters. We're going to offset the line from center. We're going to use that line to extend down and then we will trim back the front edge. And in fact we need to trim off this tail at the top. Okay, so that gives us a, a two section loft we can do that will create our um, tapered part there. Okay, so we have these shapes, but we need to join them before we can use the loft command. Make them one, all, one poly shape. So we're going to type join. And we're going to select the four enemies in one section. And it may be semantics, but I would start in the same corner. And that way the start and end point are in the same place. So we're going to repeat the command starting at the same corresponding corner and going around. Okay, I've now joined those two shapes. Now we're going to go to loft and we're going to create or select our two cross sections. It should knit a preview. And we've hit enter, cross sections only. We have now have a solid. So we should have a solid shape with a draft angle on it for the clevis body. So just to double check, we'll go to conceptual. Now if you see grid lines, you've made a surface, not a solid. Okay, I'm going back to wireframe. Now I'm going to do a press pull to uh, on one of these holes to make it go all the way through. And our depth is 38. And hopefully we got a hole in our solid. So let's go back to uh, conceptual real quick. Oh, got to hit enter. Okay. Uh, go back to conceptual and we now have our 10 millimeter hole going through the clevis. Okay, the next step is to make the cutout in the clevis. Okay, so we're going to draw a rectangle that's going to create the uh, cut through the clevis. So I want to be in world coordinate systems and I'm going to go to the top. And I'm going to draw a line from the back corner of the top of the model to the left. And I'm going to offset that line by 9. And then I'm going to repeat the offset command. I'm going to go another 20. And now I need a line that's on center line of our circle here. So I'm going to shoot up past the part. And I'm going to offset that by 16, which gives us the base of our cutout. I'm going to go to the view top, and we're going to trim. And I'm going to use a uh, mode that's a uh, project uh, based off the view we're in. So you have to be in the correct view, and we'll be able to trim off the two lines we just made in relationship to the view we're in based off center line. And we now can connect uh, the ends of those two lines and delete this construction line that we have that's in a different plane. Okay, so now I'm going to offset the line we just made. Um, we're going to go 16 plus 11. Let's just go 12. So that would be uh, 28 out. And then we trim our um, this box we're going to use for construction. Okay, so now we're going to we're going to make a region out of those uh, four pieces, and then we're going to do a extrude on that region. We're going to accept our selection. 
And we're going to go all the way through the part, so that would be uh, 22 millimeters. All right, so we, we now have this chunk. And we're going to do a body subtract. So we're going to take our parent body that we're subtracting material from, hit select it and accept it. And then the, the body we're going to use for cutting. And we have our clevis now. Okay, so now we're going to start building the uh, horizontal section of the arm. And we're going to draw on a plane that's parallel to the back face of this. So on the top view from this corner we have a 12 millimeter radius. We're actually going to put the radius on as a fillet later, but we need to offset a line from this edge out 12 millimeters and then we're going to do an extrusion for the rest of the arm. So we want to use that number so we're going to go back to wireframe and we're going to move to the front view and I'm going to create another line here from the bottom corner of our existing solid straight up and with that line I'm going to do an offset of 12 millimeters that's the size of the radius to the left so that gets the, gives us the left extreme line of an extrusion we're going to do that goes out the back of this. Okay, so now let's do a line from the bottom corner to the right. We'll go pretty far. And the overall height of this is 22. So we're going to do an offset of 22. And up. Okay, so that will allow us to trim off the edge here. So from this corner to the right, we're trying to find the center of the 28 millimeter and the 6 millimeter radiuses. That is 41 millimeters from this corner. So we're going to do an offset of 41 over. Okay, so now we're, we've established the rectangular region for our extrusion. Now we need to locate the center of the R6 and R28 um, radius. So the 41 we offset over is one axis of the center line and the other axis would be offset by um, offset down six millimeters from our bottom edge. The intersection of this line and this line is the center of our radius. So we're going to do an extend and extend that line down. Okay, so we're going to create a circle on an end point there and we're going to call that our six millimeter radius, 12 millimeter. Then we're going to draw another one and we're going to call that one uh, a 28 radius which should come tangent with the line up at the top here. Alright, so we've placed the 28 radius on the left and the 6 millimeter on the bottom and we're going to delete some things so it's a little more clear what's going on here. the bottom edge of the part so where it would be tangent with the six millimeter and we're going to trim off the top where it would be tangent with the 28. Okay so now we need to locate the other end of the part, other end of the bend which also has a six millimeter radius and a 28 millimeter radius and that is 81 inches horizontally Um, from the center of this arc and then vertically it is um, 30 millimeters from a line horizontal here so I, I guess I shouldn't have um, erased that line but 
I'll draw one off in the other direction. And if I offset that line I just created by 30, that, and the intersection of it and this line we have here is the center of those radiuses that are at the top of the bar. So I'm going to draw um, uh, an R6 circle and an R28 circle. Okay, so now we're going to draw the lines that should end up being parallel uh, if we do this correctly. They're tangent first to the 28 at the top and the 6 at the bottom and then the one at the 6 is tangent to the 6 at the top is going to be tangent to the 28 on the bottom. So watch carefully. We're going to go, we're going to go into the line command and we're going to turn off everything but tangent in our O snaps. And we're going to go to a one, the large 28 millimeter circle and we're going to click until the tangency symbol, green tangency symbol shows up. And then we're going to go down to the bottom of the six millimeter until the tangency symbol shows up. And we draw a line. We've now constructed the line that is at the proper angle for our bent section. Okay. Now we're going to go and we're going to repeat the same procedure, but we're going to go from the top of the six millimeter the bottom of the 28. These two lines, if you did it correctly, will now be parallel to each other. And we can start doing some trimming. Let's, let's trim up here at the top so that we can kind of see what's going on here. We're going to go trim. And we're going to trim off that part of the big circle, this part of the big circle, this part of the big circle, and zoom in and get this little tail here. And then we're going to trim off these segments. Okay, so we have our top bend and down here we trim off the bottom of our six millimeter and we have the lower bend. Okay. So now let's go down to this other one. Now we don't have any horizontal lines yet. So we're going to do that next. Okay, so we're going to toggle our O snap to include quadrant we're going to turn off tangent um, and hopefully that'll work uh, with ortho. So we're going to go from the quadrant here at the bottom of the 28 millimeter and go horizontal and then we're going to do the same thing with our six millimeter. So the quadrant when you go change to a uh, 90 degrees should be tangent with the circle and now let's trim this up. So we're going to trim the big one first. Okay. And then we'll trim the small one. And I'm just going to I'm just going to delete the extra pieces. Okay. So there we go. So we have the geometry laid out for our bend without having to do any angles or math. Okay, now let's uh, find our termination point uh, for this so we can make the extrusion. So our termination point of this block is 140 millimeters from center line of this circle minus the width of the clevis, center of the clevis, which is 29. So let's go ahead and um, locate the clevis. Um, we're going to go clevis pin. So we're going to go an offset of 140 from the center of our pivot. So if I were to extend this line down, the center of the 13 millimeter clevis pinhole is somewhere on this line. And the arm we're trying to extrude out ends 29 millimeters to the left of it. So we're going to offset by 29. 
and that gives us the end of this section here. All right, so I'm going to trim up what's well, going to be our extrusion boundary. And for demonstration purposes, I'm going to change my layer. I'm going to change the layer of those entities to the construction layer. So let me select them all, and they'll change color. So you'll see what we're trying to do here, what we're trying to accomplish. And we're going to change that to the construction layer. So the profile we're going to extrude away from us is now in cyan. Okay, so now let's create a region out of those entities. Okay, and we should be able to do an extrude. We're doing an extrude of that region. We're going to hit enter, and we're going to move back the width of the part, which is 14 millimeters. All right, so if we were to um, go to conceptual, you can see that's what it looks like. At this stage. 